Well, I'm Jim Allison, still the uh, general counsel of the County Judges and Commissioner Association. They haven't fired me yet, but uh, uh, they may be leaning on it. Um, it's interesting um, uh, listening to these presentations, and I think uh, you can tell there's a common theme that ran through them. Uh, they're, they're, they're positive. There's optimism. Uh, they're bringing you uh, fresh ideas and things that you can try and, and ideas that we can grow and expand. And, uh, and you know, being, the I guess, the old cynical member of the team, uh, I can't help but be reminded that, uh, particularly when dealing with the criminal justice system, uh, I think uh, it reminds me of the old saying that uh, the definition of lunacy is to continue to do the same thing over and over and expect to get a different result. Uh, so clearly this is an area where we need to look at new ideas and try them. And that, I think, um, more than anything else, has been the hallmark of the Task Force on Energy and Defense. When I was working to uh, help pass Senate Bill 7 and, uh, and get us out of all those lawsuits that counties were losing around the state and, and the um, uh, difficulties we were facing uh, with no system, we decided to build into this agency a few things that you don't find in many state agencies. And some of these gentlemen here have helped build it into one or two others. But we got to do this one from the ground up. Uh, we put in, uh, for example, uh, an information system as part of the creation of the agency. You often hear us talk about, and you've heard remarks here today, about how we suffer from unfunded mandates from the state. This, this state, particularly Texas, has a, a very bad history of passing things at the legislative level, the state level, pushing mandatory duties down to local government, particularly counties, and sending no funding with it. Uh, that's an unfunded mandate. Well, we did something with this agency. We built an automatic uh, report uh, into it that tells us every year uh, what the status uh, of that mandate and its funding is. That's shown us some interesting things. <clears throat> and there, we're getting those reports in now for this past year, and we'll see uh, where we are uh, when they come in. But we know that um, uh, we started out, of course, with no state funding uh, before Senate Bill 7, but we started out with no system. Uh, we started out with very little services, and what we had was purely checkerboard. Uh, we imposed on that a statewide system uh, with some mandatory levels of service, and we put in a little trickle of state money. I believe it was about 9%, Jim, when we uh, kicked it off. Uh, upon reliance of some good folks at the legislature, uh, we've been back every session uh, asking for the state to step up its support for these services, uh, and improve uh, its level uh, of financial support for it. And we've edged up you know, 9%, 11%, 15%. Uh, Maybe we'll be a little better when these reports come in due to some little more trickle of funding that we got. But even while that's been happening, uh, what have we also seen? We've seen the total cost of the system going up even faster than the state's contribution. So we're seeing counties having to go for additional funding to their general fund, and that general fund is dependent upon property taxes. So uh, even as we have implemented new and better practices, even as we've implemented a better system, even as we look for more improvements to make in the system, we have been using more resources. But uh, I think that we need to continue to look at this, and particularly at this time, it's always good to look at things from the other person's point of view. Uh, and I'm certainly, one of the things I really like about listening to Jeff Blackburn is he always gives me a different point of view. <laughs> and, uh, and he never fails. Um, so today when, uh, uh, when he says, you know, in this hall of justice of ours, uh, you know, we got some mice. Uh, we probably even got some rats, you know. We've, we've got some, that, some folks in there that we need to weed out. And then he tells you, and, and by the way, there's this wildfire coming that may burn down the building. But the good thing is it'll burn down the rats, you know. <laughs> and we can rebuild it, you know, with rat-proof buildings. Uh, and uh, I thought, you know, that's a different point of view. Uh, but uh, I'm, st I'm more uh, of the, uh, you know, the guy who's standing over here saying, uh, how can we keep that building standing even while we improve it? Uh, mandatory CLE, uh, better use of the appointment and the non-appointment uh, power of judges, the grievance system, uh, you know, certainly all need to be stepped up. But 
I need to tell you about what I do see is coming, and this is where Jeff and I agree. Um, I think uh, the, the wildfire is there. I think uh, there is a storm approaching uh, that you need to know about because it, it could sweep up your particular segment of county services with it. We know that the Texas has been generally spared thus far the worst of the economic downturn that's going on in the rest of the country. But we also know, as Dr. Spandenberg said, we're not immune. Uh, and eventually it's coming here too. Well, what happens in times of economic downturn in the criminal justice system? Uh, we see an increase in caseload, particularly in property crimes. Uh, so what does that mean? Higher demand for services, uh, and including particularly indigent services. Uh, so unless something changes a lot faster than I think it will on the national scale, we're re-entering one of those cycles that we've been through before and that we certainly saw in the late 80s and early 90s uh, when we had a serious prison population uh, issue here. We think we do now, but those of us that survived when we had over 30,000 state prisoners backed up in our county jails can tell you we ain't seen a crisis in the last 20 years or so like we saw then. But we see a downturn coming, uh, increased demand. Uh, what comes with that when there's an economic downturn at the state level particularly, decrease in funding. Uh, while we have seen in the last few years due to the improved revenues from the oil and gas severance tax and the sales tax, the state actually doing pretty well for the past two years and having what more revenues at present than they predicted, the predictions for the future are for the opposite, for declining funding. That's bad enough. That presents a situation where to try to find the funds not only to meet the basic responsibilities for energy defense services, let alone any additional money to do some things that need to be done and try some things that need to be done, we are going to see in effect a likely tightening of the funding stream. And then add to that something that probably doesn't impinge on your world near as much as it does on mine as I deal generally with local governments and their fundings. But add to that, there's a parallel uh, experience going on out there. There's a parallel world almost. There is a groundswell of protest, a groundswell of objection to the degree that Texas, both at the school funding and county and city funding level, has used the property tax. Uh, and in certain parts of the state, uh, that's reached a crescendo. Uh, as they say, uh, in certain parts of the state, they speak of little else, it would seem, in the public discourse, but how bad the property tax is and the level to which it has now prevailed on our taxpayers. And there's truth in it. While Texas is very proud of the fact that, depending on whose scale you use, we're somewhere around 46 to 48 in the nation in total tax burden, in the total amount of taxes that we take for, sto for state and local programs from our taxpayers. Now, I think that may be something we need to look at as to whether well, that's a good thing or not, but it certainly is held up as a good thing. But at the same time, by no matter whose ranking you use, we're in the top 10 in the property tax burden. So we have used that as our funding tool. Uh, we're very proud of the fact that we don't have a state income tax, uh, and that tells you, frankly, the story. Uh, those other states that don't use the property tax primarily use the income tax. Why do I tell you all this? Uh, I, I guess because as the movie trailers say, you should be afraid. You should be very, very afraid. Uh, not because next week's Halloween, uh, and, you know, and this might be a trick or treat coming, but because the legislature's coming. Uh, and they are going to be back in January. You know, much, much worse than, uh, than Halloween. Uh, and they're going to face this dual, this dual pressure. They're going to face the pressure to fund these initial, additional needs and additional levels. At the same time, they're going to face pressure from taxpayers to not only not increase the tax burden, but decrease it, particularly in the property tax area. And, and, and that's something that, that you can have something to say about. And I think you must have something to say about because when you look at people's point of view 
a legislator comes here for 140 days every two years, uh, January through May, tries to deal with a multitude of issues, and mostly depends upon receiving good information on forming that public policy from a very small group of people. They can't canvass their constituents and go talk to everybody, so they listen to people who bring them information. They listen to those who are interested enough to present information. All too often, in my opinion, that comes from people that are well-funded, uh, those who can afford a lobbyist, those who can afford to put together information, those who can afford to come here and present that information, and that's who they hear from. And you wouldn't believe this, but there's not a very strong lobby for energy defendants <laughs> or, mentally, or the mentally ill. Uh, there's not a lot of people beating down the doors over there to present the point of view of what's needed in those areas. Uh, so that leaves us. Uh, that leaves us to tell the story. And that leaves us to be there and make sure that they get good information about what funding these programs does. Now, keep in mind that when dealing with legislators and, and, and other juveniles, you know, everything that, that we need to know we learned in kindergarten, right? So don't just beat on them, you know. Remember the gold star. And so when you uh, find, as we have, that they did fund some programs last time that worked, look for an opportunity first to go and tell them how much you appreciate that. If your county has benefited from one of the grants, the discretionary grants from the task force, and you've been able to do something locally that had a benefit that you would never have been able to squeeze out of that commissioner's court uh, because they absolutely you know, can't pay you to do anything more than what they have been, and, and trying something new is certainly not going to pop up uh, in their budget uh, very easily. But if, if that cooperation led to something good happening, go to them and tell them particularly tell them in public, particularly tell them in the next two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, of course, that, you know, most of them don't have opposition. Uh, uh, it, the House is up and half the Senate, but this is a time to talk to them. Don't wait till January. Don't wait until they're down here and deluged by all of those well-paid lobbyists uh, that will descend upon them at that time. So, I, I think um, that if, if I'm going to leave you with anything, it's uh, you know, the hot topic for me and for Mary Ann and those of us who deal with this on every day at the Capitol uh, is that we need your help. Uh, we need the story to be told about the need that's out there. We need for the legislature to understand that, uh, first of all, if they can, they should join the majority of the states that view it as a state responsibility and fund energy criminal defense at the state level. The degree to which we are able to provide effective and efficient assistance to energy defendants should not depend upon the property values of your county. A fundamental constitutional right should not be dependent upon whether or not you've got oil and gas in your county. Uh, it should be a statewide responsibility funded on a statewide basis. And then finally, if they can't fund it, if they can't, you know, get to the point where they pick up more of that responsibility, at least don't take away the present ability of counties with the tools that they have to make those decisions at the local level and set their funding based on local needs. Thank you.